Hi, everybody. Today I'm going to draw a picture of a hummingbird. It's one of the greatest tools you'll ever use anytime you're drawing. It is a tool which allows you to zoom in. Now, because I'm using an air-cooled computer, a water-cooled computer, excuse me, and this uh, takes a lot of power in order to create, it ends up buzzing a lot. And so you hear the fan in the background, and what that is is that's just the water in my water-cooled computer going crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just a little bit of a long beak, which I don't really like the way that turned out. So then I'll go up here and I'll take it off. And we'll go up here and paint a straight line. So let's see if we can do that. Let's see. We'll get this one. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. So I'm going to undo the line. From here to here. Keep the line. Maybe it'll come there. So now what I've done is I've just created, um, obviously, I have just created the beak of my hummingbird. And then because it's so big, I'm going to take this down a little bit in size. And now I'm going to put a head on the little sucker. So the idea behind a lot of these drawings that I do, because I'm drawing with the mouse, you're not going for a lot of details. A lot of times what you do is you're just trying to create the image that you can then bleed and blend down to the point where you're going to have a very nice picture by the time you're done. So all I'm doing is I'm zooming in a little bit here, give you a little bit more detail. So the idea is Take this all, and you gotta start thinking. Okay, this is a bird, and so I have the beak in there, and you want it to be a little bit of length. It being a hummingbird, and the pieces you don't like, you can erase or take off. You can by using the eraser tool. So again, I'm I'm just playing with my my mouse as I do this. And this tool here is the one that I use the most when it comes to drawing on the computer, and it's a smudge tool. And what it does is it allows you to create some of these really cool effects with your color and uh, and softening things up a little bit. So you can see how as you pull this, you can get different effects to make it look a little bit more interesting. Simply by pulling, and then that allows you to draw off and so um, this is my the start of my hummingbird, and you can see how it's starting to become a little more interesting to look at. Okay, and then as you zoom out, you'll see that what I start to have then as you zoom out is you have a little bit of a nice head, which can be the, the head of your hummingbird. And then from there, what I want to do is I get, I get my brush. And we want to work with an emerald kind of shape, kind of color. So we want to be in around this color over here, which is a little bit, a little bit more of an emerald color. And I'm going to go a little bit bigger into this little from there to then bring a little bit of a body to this guy and give it a few different shades of that that green color. I'm going to then pull in order to create the body of the hummingbird. And that's where now the smudge comes in. Because now what you're doing is sort of pull this piece of in to give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of interest as the colors sort of blend together. And so this is just called the smudge tool that I'm using. And it's, like I said before, it allows me to create some of the effects that I like to do. Now, from here, let's give the hummingbird a long tail. 
from the same color. So we're just going to sort of move the rest up and down this way. So now I'm running out of room here, and I don't like the placement of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this and copy it. And then I'm going to go new texture. Okay. So there it is. And I'm going to paste it. And then I'll be able to move it over a little bit because I didn't like where it was. So you see how I can then move it around the page and put it wherever I like. And so now I've got that in a little bit better position to allow me to draw with it. And I'm going to go to a bigger smudge because I'd like to get a little bit more of this done very quickly. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. So you're starting to see some of the colors that you can create in here. And lighten it up again. I go one better again. And then you pull some of the darker colors across it. You give it just this texture. It's kind of cool little flow to it. Now we're going to talk brilliant red colors. I honestly don't know um, the actual colors of the hummingbird. I'm not drawing from a picture. I'm just drawing from my head. So uh, maybe I just have to excuse some of the strange colors that may end up in this hummingbird. And because the hummingbird's wings are always flying it's so bloody fast all the time, you really can't see it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some of these colors. Make it a little bit more interesting to look at. Look, chuck in a little bit of orange. And the red and the green uh, are complementary colors for those of you who know a little bit about art. And so, all again, all it is is a colors that I can then pull together. And again, this is one that I'm not really happy with the placement of it. I like a little bit more light on it. So, I'm just going to cut it, cut it out of the picture, and then I'm going to put it back in again. So, edit, paste it as a new object. I'm going to pull it down so that I can put a little bit more emphasis into the, the bird itself. So let's put this back up again to about 25 at it. So now let's pull all this stuff together and see if we can start getting a little bit of an interesting wing movement to the bird. Now you have to remember that because they're coming birds and their wings are moving so fast, a lot of times you can't really see the colors, or you can't see the wing itself. It's just sort of a blur. And so that's what we're trying to achieve here with this really fast colors. And you see how it gives you a real neat little texture, funny looking texture as different colors pull through it. And so you just grab a color and sort of pull it up. And again, you have this nice little effect going here with some of the different colors. Here, tail in there, and zoom in on the head and do a little bit of work in the head area. So this he's got a big red blob in the middle of his head, so I'm going to pick that. So I'm going to pull it and then make it part of the head itself. So I didn't like that, so then all I do is I go down and take edit undo, and let's take this back down to about a 10 or a 5. Five level, which then will allow me to pull some of this red into the bird's head and make it look more like a part of the bird's head. So I'm going to make that one a very way. Pull it up. Just trying to create a little bit of the texture that you might find on the belly of the, the hummingbird. Make it a little bit more interesting to 
look at. Go back up here to the smudge. Get a little bit more of the green. We want to get some of the bigger area here. So I'm going to pull some of this stuff up to here. And now, again, I'm working on a little bit of a smaller smudge. So again, we'll give that effect of the real fast moving wing. It is a blurred shape, but not just the shape of the wing itself. And to get some of the blue cool colors that they get from that fast moving wing. And again, the, the nice thing about this is that when you're drawing a picture like this, you really can't screw it up. Because you can always go in and erase the trap you don't like. And that's one of the reasons why I love working on computers and I know I'm not I'm drawing to do this, keep drawing until you get it right. I don't know what this is going to do, but let's see. So we can soften this up a little bit. Fill in a few different colors. Give it a little bit more body where I want the wings to look. A little bit more solid. No hand parts here. And then the tail. Just give it a little bit more blur. So now as I went smaller, now all of a sudden I have a really simple uh, little quickly drawn bird that has, looks like it has lots of details because I started really big and then made it really small. And so it's, it's pretty simple to do. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on uh, a bird, a uh, flower of some sort. And so we'd like the first to start with the stem a bit. So let's uh, work on the stem. What I find really funny is that when people watch it drawing, like you can start with uh, this looks when you're drawing it originally and just putting the color on. What you'll get from a lot of people is, well, I can do that. That's pretty simple. There's not a big deal. That's, that looks so easy to do. And it is because what it's, it's very similar to drawing your uh, pictures that you would in, uh, in kindergarten or grade two or whatever. But in the end, what you want to do is you just want to refine it. And add a little bit more interesting details. And you do that using the smudge tool. And so you can't talk about the smudge tool too much. So this really um, originally is a very simple leaf that you looked at and you said, oh, that looks pretty simple. You then can make things that are a lot more interesting simply by pulling colors and pulling shapes. And then you can pull it to whichever shape you'd like it to be. And then it makes it a little bit more interesting to look at, right? And so a, a very simple drawing, the second you know, I go, now as you pull this and you start to let the leaf draw itself, then you have something that's a little bit more interesting to look at. And so the same thing happens when you draw your flower. Like if you want your flower to look really, really um, dynamic, you can just pull the different colors as you're doing it. And you end up with something that's unique. Every single time you draw, draw it ends up with something that's a little different than what other people may draw, but it ends up interesting to look at. And so it's just a matter of playing with it a little bit. And so you get something that you find interesting. If you find it interesting, other people might as well. And so, okay, now that's. I was working with the big um, draw tool, pull tool, excuse me. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some details into the, the leaf and that kind of stuff. So it has a little bit more of a refined leaf look to it. And it has a little bit of a pattern to it. So you will find like the, the veins in the, in the leaf or something like that. And so you don't have to be exact and you're not trying to create high leaf detail very realistic. 
realistic what they think, what you're doing is you're trying to draw something that's a little bit uh, abstract. And so that's the whole goal here, is to, to try and pull into some of the ideas on how, how you think it should work. You know, it'd be kind of cool to have another leaf coming out here. Let's put another leaf on there. Should pull some of the color in there to make it a little bit more bold. And I think another one here would be kind of nice. On the other side. We've got some of the basic colors in here. Now I'm going to pull all this other stuff. Try and get it a little bit more of a flower look. So the last time I was drawing, um, I showed my son the little uh, picture that I'd drawn. Of, it was just a lady's face, and I was just playing. And uh, I had drawn this lady's face, and the whole time through it, my son's I showed it to my son and he said, well, I don't just say anything like that. He just stood there and like it just grew. And sometimes I like this drawing and sometimes I don't mind sitting down and having a, a chat as I'm drawing things. But in the end, it's always nice if you sit there and you chatter away and you talk. And then other times you just sit there and shut up and draw. And so for the next little while, I'm just going to shut up and draw and make this flower a little bit more interesting to look at. If uh, anybody has any questions or anything like that, feel free to put it in the comments area and I will uh, try to answer them the best I can. I notice uh, there's a fair number of people here that I've recognized from my, uh, my teaching days. I noticed there's a few volleyball players here as well. And there's a, a few people from my long ago past. So it's, uh, it's great to see such a variety of friends who are willing to put some time in on a Thursday night to come watch me try to create another picture. So I've created a fair number of uh, different versions of the hummingbird um, like this, and I find it uh, it's easy and it's fast. And when I'm really bored, I am, I can doodle this as I'm playing on my computer, or I can doodle this on a piece of paper without having to do a lot of research as far as trying to make everything look perfect and trying to make it look as realistic as possible. I find it's uh, it's a lot more fun just to to get in and just draw and then hopefully in the end you end up with something like and if you don't then such is like but again it's, it's just playing on the on the computer more than anything else and so drawing on the computer for me the reason why I do it and the reason why I got into the drawing on the tablet is that uh, it allows me to do it anywhere when I was on holidays, I used to take my paint sets with me. So I'd have watercolors and I'd have a little container that I had my water and it was a little what an old water bottle. And what I did is I would have my paints and all that other stuff. But it would take you like 10, 15 minutes to set something like that up before you could even start to paint, which is fine if you're at a resort or something like that, or or you're in a you're in a room where you have a, a, some time to set it up. But what I really liked about the iPad drawing, and that's where I spend most of my time when I draw, um, is the fact that you can do it without taking a lot of time to set it up. You just sit down and you start to draw. And so you can do it almost anywhere. And so I found that uh, my wife likes to shop or something like that, and I hate it. So then I would drive her to a mall or something like that, and then I can sit in the mall quietly in a corner someplace and just doodle and draw. And so as you're doing that, I find it's very relaxing. And it's always been a hobby of mine. For a little while there, it was my job because I did teach high school art. But most of the times so when I'm drawing, um, I draw because it calms me down and it makes me uh, very relaxed. 
and I use it as a method of uh, some people read books, which I still do. I read books an hour then, but uh, I would much rather spend an hour doing this than sitting down and just reading a book. And so it's just a, a method of me playing and learning to relax and learning to take some time for myself to calm down and to think about the things I'm doing because there isn't a lot of thought process, as you see, as I'm picking away at this and trying to make it a little bit more like a, a plan. As I spend my time doing this, you don't have to put a lot of thought into it. It's not like it's a heavy duty bag go or something like that. I'm thinking it's just some flower that anybody who does any gardening wouldn't be able to tend it by it because I don't even know what kind of flower I wanted it to be. It's kind of cool how uh, you have the ability by pulling, I can erase things or I can change the shape of things really simply. So if I don't like the way the leaf is, is bending or something like that, then you just go in and you sort of erase it by pulling. And so then now you have a little bit more of a, an interesting flower to look at. But the, the thing that is missing now is, is your tints and shades. So I need a little bit more black in order to give it a little bit more depth. You see how the black on the, the beak and that stuff comes out? And sort of stands out and so then you, yeah, you have to sort of do the same type of thing here where it needs some black in here and in different locations just to give it a little bit more interest to look at and to see some of the details and to give you definition um, a lot of artists will tell you and I try not to do this very often uh, is you should always draw first with the darker colors and blend the colors together and you shouldn't ever have a section of pure black on your picture. But you see how this starts to turn into like a brown and a different color when you start to drag it? But even that little bit that is in there now, so it's not the big black or an outline on anything. There's no such thing as an outline on, on things in nature. There's always color and there's an edge to things, but they normally don't have a black outline around them. And so uh, new drawers tend to put a lot of black in order to give it definition. And it's better to try to find the opposite color on the color wheel and use that for your shape. And so the example I used a lot when I was teaching was that, for instance, if you're drawing a banana, your shadow of your banana on the underside where the light isn't hitting should probably be purple because the purple is the, the opposite color to the yellow that you find in a banana. So this, uh, you notice how I have some yellow in here? So I'll see, I'll show you what I mean, what I mean by purple. So if I take a purple color, like this, and I take this purple and add a little bit of a purple close to the yellow, you can see how it will make a, a very interesting contrast. And that should be used a darker purple mixed in with the black will give you a little bit more of an interesting, um, I don't know, in, interreaction between the two different colors. And so having the, the purple and having the red in there and having the green, which are just opposite colors on the color wheel, then make the colors work very well together and give you kind of an interesting texture. So you can see how that starts to, with the different colors in there, it's a little bit more interesting than just the blue. And people are always afraid to just mix colors and just throw them together and see what they look like. And so a lot of the pictures that I've done, um, there's warm colors, there's cold colors. And so your warm colors would be your, all the colors that you see here would be your warm colors. The cool cool colors are your blues and that kind of stuff. And so uh, they're kind of handy when you're trying to, to make things a little bit cool, cooler and a uh, colder feel to them. But the colors that I have in this one are fairly warm. And other than the, the greens, you would be considered a little bit um, cooler, but So then I've added a little bit of blue in here just to soften how um, this is in comparison to the flower because they don't want it to be almost identical to the, to the flower color. So I just smudged some blue in there just to give it a little bit more interest to it. And I think a little bit of blue up in the wings will help to the blood. So, so a lot of this crap as you're doing it, you're sort of just doing it and you have no real idea what you're doing. Of you heard 
colors out there. Blue and red give you purple. And so some of this stuff is a bullet, and you end up with the blue intermixing with the, the red and with the oranges, you end up with a little bit of a purple in there, which is kind of nice because you have a lot of yellow in there. And you see how, how the, the red is dominating this one section? You see how interesting this, this wing is compared to this wing? And so this wing needs a little bit of yellow in it right in here just to, to sort of balance it out with the other one. And so that's when you're talking a little bit about balance and how you uh, balance colors and make sure they work well together is that you want them to be pretty similar and kind of work well together. And so hmm. Or anything. Strangest flower you've ever seen. Got a little bit of a flower here and a little bit of a bird. Now, if you want to see some cool stuff, just let's take this, this, this object and I'm going to combine all of this stuff with the background. Now, this is just some computer stuff, but check out some of these cool effects. Let's take this whole thing and go back. You see the effect it had on that? And so, let me just zoom in here so you can see it a little better. Cancel that. Let me just go in a little bit closer so you can look at it now. This is called, uh, this is part of Corel Draw, and that's a program I'm using. So I'm gonna go to texture and I'm gonna make the whole thing plastic. And what it does is it just, it gives yourself here some depth to this and makes it look like it's really heavy to change. And so you can make the depth of that deeper and deeper and deeper. And then it gets, like, then it gets to, you lose some of the definition. So that's kind of cool there. I think that's kind of neat. That gives you a smoother feel to it. So it looks a little bit more like paint and it puts some shadow and some depth in it. And so if you put some highlights, jack the highlights up, you see how it starts to give it a little bit more of a, it's breaking the plant down a little bit more. So there's kind of a nice look to it. And you see how it gives it a shadow in behind it and makes it stand out a little bit, which is kind of cool. And then let's go in here and let's put some texture, canvas. Ooh, that I can go like that. Okay, but I want to I want to pick a different section, so I want to put some texture in the background. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take what they call the magic wand, and the magic wand to see how it highlighted the area. I'm going to invert the mask, which I'm going to turn it inside out. And now when I do now it's now this is the area that's active. I think, but we'll see. Just a minute. So then I'll go to the effects and go to texture, and let's see if I can put a brick wall behind it. It didn't work, so I went to it the other way around. I need to invert the mask again and then go to effect and go to texture, brick wall. So now I've got a hummingbird stuck on a brick wall. I don't like it though. So cancel that. Let's see if I can get a softer one. Texture, elephant skin. That's kind of interesting. Another effect here. Plaster wall. And the Sistine Chapel drawings. You see this area here? This isn't part of it. So if I go like this and hold down my shift key, now that space that was white will now fill in when I put a background on it. So let's pick another background here. Let's see. Let's put some noise in here. I don't know if that'll do anything. Let's see. So it just gives it a little bit more texture. So that's kind of neat. I kind of like that. 
can see how it has a little bit more texture on it. Now let's just see what happens. If I can pull this a little bit closer, let's look. It's kind of nice, but I don't like the fact that you've got dots in his face. So I need to soften that by going in there, bring it down to about a three. Smudge some of these dots out of there. Make it a little bit more white so there's no dots in space because that just is wrong on some of these dots. Kind of cool. Now let's go in here and put in a camera effect, lens flare. Let's do. I don't even know if this is going to work. Let's do some presets here. I don't know. Too bright. Blue sunlight. <laughs> kind of cool. But it's not dark enough, so I don't like that. Let me go into bubbles. I'm going to do 3D. I'm going to emboss it. Here's a picture embossed. You want to see the original color embossed? The depth of it's too high, though. There's a little bit of a boss um, color. And again, you can see what I did with it. And so now it's uh, even heavier. The way the lines are drawn on it makes it even heavier. And I want to check the rest of the other mask. I want to make this smaller. Let's make it a little bit more of a picture that's this shape. Image crop to the mask. So now I've got that picture a little bit more. I want to go in here. And I want to get my, my magic wand back out of here. Get the right stuff at that spot again. In here. Now it's got a whole pile of dots. So now watch this effect. This is so cool. I like these because it's going to transform the colors to psychedelic background. And the level that I have back there. Do you like that? I don't think I do. I kind of like the blue background. So let's go effect and undo that. Undo it again. Let's see what else could I can do for drop thick plane. Weird. Reset that to normal default. Too sure I like that either. So cancel that one. Can't move my background of the way and look the way I want it. So let me try something here. Let's go mask. Invert. Hmm. That's gonna be interesting. Okay, so let's go edit, cut that. Take this. Go with a great big huge. Let's go over here. Under.
हो गया देखो उसको नंबर एक बार Undo that. Undo that object. Undo the paste. Let's play with this background a little bit more. Let's see if I can get a little bit more interesting in the background. So blur, soften it up. Let's go with a radial blur. See it starting to show up here, so it's not in the right spot. So, so I want to go to a 35 millimeter prime. I'm like the setting of some of the light on it. Too much. Don't like that. Like that either. Maybe it's because I don't have the background. Colors, so we'll go with gray and go with vignettes. I want it to be darker. Let's go with a darker blue. Let's okay. Kind of looks like this moon now, right? Let's go with vignette again. like that at all.
dead, but they did not see me there. There's a door here. Take a nice dark color. This one. Zoom in really tight. Put a little. A little bit of a signature. Done that, you notice how that I zoomed in. Now, some of this stuff here looks like it's not part of the picture, so I need to get a little bit more of a pull, take some of the edge off of some of these the pieces that I've pasted on. So, I need to take some of the edge off. So you can see, like, see this, this gray edge. I don't like those gray edges because then it looks like it's been pasted on. So all I'm doing is uh, just taking some of the edges off. And so you can see where some of it doesn't look like it's part of the picture anymore. And so I will just help make it fit a little bit better. See this mess I got going here? I don't really like that. So let's pull this out. Pull this out into the Okay. I'll put the dots back in in a second. Look at this idea that's going to get here on the tail. I want it in my background, so now I gotta back it all the way up. Back, 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 back. Back up, back up. Take a second, but fair amount. Oh, see how now it, it, it isn't allowing me to go to certain areas. So that's there. That's the outer ring. That's a little bit farther. That's a little bit farther. So you can see all the different layers that are on the background now. So normally what I would do is I'd get all ticked in the end going and do it in a different way. But let's go on creative here and see what I'm going to do. Texture, bubbles. So they just go into areas that stay away from my bird. No, you've gone into my bird. So, 
this one. I have to get rid of that one. Now let's see what I do. That's creative. There. I like that. Get to the outside. Very bizarre. Give me some smudge. Give me a big smudge. Big deal. little dots on top of that there. See what I got. That's better. Try to figure out what planet that bird lives on. Here and now, I'll just uh, what I'll do is I'll post it. So I hope you liked it. So thanks for joining. Not my best. <laughs> 